Let's turn back to our top story. This year's Nobel Prize for Literature has been awarded to the Tanzanian-born novelist Abdul Razak Gurno. And Abdul Razak joins us live. Thank you very much indeed and congratulations. Uh, thank you. It's a pleasure to join you. Tell us about the moment that you heard. The moment you heard. You know, everybody wants to know that. The moment I heard, I was making myself a cup of tea uh, uh, just about uh, before lunch. Uh, and this, uh, somebody on the phone, you know, these days you get these cold calls, and I thought this is another one of them. <laughs> um, and I picked it up, and this guy said, hello, uh, you have won the Nobel Prize for Literature. And I said, you, come on, get, get out of here. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he talked me out of that and gradually persuaded me. <laughs> well, congratulations. Um, yeah, it's ab absolutely wonderful. So, And I saw that you tweeted that you dedicate this prize hi. to Africa and Africans. I just wonder when you write what you hope to offer Africans. I think when you write, you write to the best of your understanding and your ability. Uh, uh, observing as carefully and hoping to give pleasure and that kind of thing. Uh, but at least for, for me, I don't say I'm doing this because I want uh, something, uh, you know, kind of practical to come out of it, something that would change anything, because that's really up to people. It's not up to a writer to mm. stand or, or write in a book. Uh, so I write to the best and leave it to, to let this uh, thing do its work wherever. Well, you say that, but the judges commended your uncompromising and compassionate penetration of the effects of colonialism and the fate of refugees. And so they must be seeing something in the experience of colonialism which they want to highlight. I wonder what you see in the experience of colonialism that you want to focus on when you write. Well, of course, of course, of course. Uh, it's, it is what I want to focus on. It is what I want people to see. Uh, I thought I was, uh, and indeed I do uh, think activism is important. I'm not saying that uh, one should just write and then just leave the writing to do its work. What I'm saying is that if you are going to talk about what it is that the writing does, the writer is not the best judge of that. The writer does, uh, at least this writer, uh, I, write, I, I do my best to, to, to speak about these things and so on, uh, but then it's up mm -hmm. to the Swedish Academy yeah. or whoever to say, yes, it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's worked. Uh, I, I, I don't feel that uh, I'm, uh, I'm wanting to be a writer mm -hmm. who, who, who wants to say to other mm -hmm. people, do this, do that, go and do that, go and do that. I tell them what I think I see and then they do whatever mm -hmm. they think they need to see, to do rather. I'm sure you're aware that the discussions around Britain's colonial past have shifted and evolved, particularly in, in recent years. I wonder if you've noticed the experience of writing around colonialism to be different now to what it was when you wrote your first books. And that is a shame. It looks like Abdul Razak Gunnar's line has frozen and uh, well that is a shame because I was very much hoping to ask him that question and hear his answer but uh, hold on I think we've got some good news. Abdul Razak can you hear me okay? I can vaguely hear you but you've lost me apparently because I can hear you saying that. Well that's that's good news that we've got me back. What I was saying was me? that I, I can very much so and I was just asking you that as the conversations more broadly about Britain's colonial history have shifted in recent years whether you find the experience of writing about colonialism has, has moved as well comparing your first books to your more recent ones. Yes it, I think uh, I think something big has changed sure. Uh, what I was beginning to say was that uh, there, there was a time, you know, pretty soon after decolonization, you know, when it seemed as if, you know, there was nothing to say. We've done it. We've left them. They've got their own whatever. And it's only uh, as time passes in the last few decades that the, the actual meaning of that, the consequences of that have become more clear. Um, and now you, what you see is a sort of resistance which is coming from mainly from, I suppose, from uh, the, uh, the Conservative Party. 
Um, but perhaps elsewhere as well, Brexit being an example of something that desires to resist that change that has taken place. Um, it's not really about just EU. Uh, it's really about mm -hmm. also, I think, uh, uh, having to think again about what kind of uh, country um, uh, this is and what kind of history it has. So I think, yeah, I think things have changed. And I think, although these things have not been unknown, you know, in sort of in academic uh, scholarship, as you are, but in popular uh, life, in popular culture, these are things that are still very much contested. Well, we very much appreciate you, you joining us. We nope. can hear you. And just before I let you go, I must ask, how are you planning to celebrate winning a Nobel Prize for Literature? At the moment, I'm, I'm planning to just uh, uh, enjoy the, um, the, the honour that has been um, awarded me. Uh, and just, um, yeah, just um, feel good. Everybody that I have heard from has uh, made me feel very happy about this uh, moment. Well, warmest congratulations and many thanks for joining us live here on the BBC.